Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Opal Bavarian and this is Crusader Kings 3. It is still 2021 and I'm very happy that you're here with me. And I thought, you know what, in the last days of this year, wouldn't it be nice to just sit down say, uh, with the Ultimate Immersion Modelist, right? Have some fun, play some old-fashioned CK3, not much editing, so this will basically a fairly unedited video. Of course, I will get rid of some of the dead air, but that's about it. We're going to try and roleplay as much as we can. I'm going to try a bit with a behind-the-scenes talk, if you will, and we're going to talk about God and the world basically be it in game or be it out of game uh, just have a relaxing time you know here as the uh, beginning of 2022 approaches hopefully that is going to be a great year today we're going to jump into this I am playing with the ultimate immersion mod list which is also linked it works it, it has been updated it has been slacked down I mentioned this in a different video as well I added some additional mods because I want to showcase something today and in the upcoming videos this is just to make that clear basically a short let's play, you know, in this Ultimate Immersion mod list, just so that we have a hangout here for the last days of the year. Now, who are we going to play? We're going to play Togoi Sok Conan Map Allen or Allen of Aramo. We are of House Ren. Actually, this is not who we're going to be playing. You know what? We're going to be playing this guy, Gulitig Morven Map Hamon of Le uh, Leon. I don't know how it's pronounced. I think Morven is probably like the actual name of this fella. He is of the House Leon. That's the right guy. And we're going to be playing him today and in the next few days until 2022 arrives. Maybe a bit beyond that, but that is neither here nor there. We are vengeful, callous and ambitious. Um, in the game rules, you will see that we have a bunch of different game rules. Don't worry about them too much. There's, of course, a lot here that comes from mods. I am very happy that we're playing with the core title inheritance mod. We're also playing with the submission to authority mod. I think we're going to have a whole lot of fun, or at least we're going to try. Now let's just take some time to talk about the character and then about uh, something behind the scenes. This is Gulatik Morven. Uh, he is an elusive shadow. He's ambitious, he is callous, and he is vengeful. And he is of House Leon. And if we go far, far enough in his history, then you will notice he is, you know, a descendant of House Breish. And if you look at that, they are very ancient. They still have some people that live in Cornwall these days. He is a count in Cornwall indeed. But if we go even further, what we will see is that he is related to, if I can find him... To the deer, uh, no, that was not actually him, give me, yep, it's a long line here, it's a very long line. He is related to Duke Conan, Mariadog Abgerend of Cornwall, and he is the mythical founder, if I'm not mistaken, the mythical founder of uh, both Brittany and the Duchy of Cornwall, at least if I remember this correctly, and whether he existed in this form, be that as it may, you can see he died in the year 387, and we want to make his legacy come true, of course, everybody here is also related to him, that is just the nature of living in Brittany, you know, very much feudalism was of course based on this family principle, so it shouldn't be really a surprise that we're all related to the, there he is, Conan Mariadog. Um, how do we feel about Alicia? here? Minus 14, because we are ambitious, he's also ambitious. We're not all that friendly with one another, maybe I have to scheme against him, I am an excellent schemer, of course. Um, beyond that, what we what you will see right here is that we are indeed in the Submission to Authority mod and we also have the Core Title Inheritance mod. And this is something that I want to approach right now. I got a question as well under the other video, under the Santa video, on the topic of why, for example, Submission to Authority isn't currently included in the Ultimate Immersion mod list. The answer is that... I have like 20, 30, maybe even 40 mods that I would like to include in the mod list, but where I'm worried, be it about performance. I will, for example, mention I love the biography mod. That is just a truly gorgeous mod. I really love that one, but the performance, you know, hit that it takes, that is something that I really can't put into this mod list. And then there are other mods, for example, Submission to Authority, Core Title Inheritance, Feudal County Interactions. Oh my god, I love Feudal County Interactions so much. It gives you like little pips here. You can just press a button, it will give you, I think, an event and whatnot, right? And it differs based on what the holding is. That stuff is so neat. It's not very intrusive. It's very cool. But the UI. The UI is a huge issue. Once, you know, for example, the holding thing is edited by anything. Once, for example, your character window is edited by anything, everything goes bonkers. So I had to exclude uh, so many mods. That is, of course, very sad. But there is a solution on the horizon, at least I hope there is. There are some very dedicated modders, I can't name all of them, but Gib, who is behind the uh, community title project, if, you, if you've heard of it, the community name project. Uh, then there's also Stick, who is behind all of the mostly mechanical mods. So, for example, we have Submission to Authority, uh, Terms and Services 
applies, I, I can't quite remember the name there, then he also is the creator of this amazing mod that makes it so that if you get a child, and we currently don't have an intelligent child, but if you get a child that has a genetic trait, they will be there as potentially becoming their traits, but they will only be revealed later on into their life, making it so that, you know, you basically don't know whether your child is a genius. Hey, your, your child comes out and immediately knows it's a genius. That's obviously nonsense. So uh, they are working on all of these amazing mods, but more importantly, they are working on uh, a mod project that would make it so that any mod that is aware of this project that cooperates with it, which is very easy to do, can be modularly switched on and off. Meaning, right now, what I am running here, this core title inheritance and submission to authority is only working and playing nice together because of an individual compatibility patch. What they are working on would make it so that we can sit down and basically I can decide I play with this, I play without it, you can decide it on your own as well and this unified UI mod that is at the end of your load list would always be able to account for it and have your window loaded incorrectly, meaning that they never overlap. When will this come out? When will you be able to freely choose which mods to play with? When can I fully put in the entire, uh, you know, the entire UIM, so the entire mod list? I don't know. That is very difficult to say, but what I can tell you is that they are working, that they are making good progress, and that I'm very excited because... And let's talk shop a bit while I set our, you know, our um, perk tree here. Let's do... How do we, how do we feel about this? We, we're not really seductive, are we? No, we are ambitious, callous, vengeful. Yeah, that's definitely scheming. Um, but we're looking at a situation where we will finally be able to say there's a new chapter of CK3 modding. Right now, I haven't really done many mod showcases for smaller mods in recent months because it's so frustrating. I would show them to you and you would basically go, oh, what is it compatible with? And my answer is not really a lot, right? And that sucks. If this comes true, if Gib, who is the main driving force behind this unified UI mod, uh, if they are making this work, oh my god. We would be looking at truly a new era. Oh, and I really like this actually. So she is related to the current Count of Kernif, uh, who is also the Count, I believe, of Naonet, so Nant. I think I'm going to marry her. I myself am 36, I already have a child. This is a great marriage. It stays within Brittany, gives me a lot of power base there, and gives me an alliance with one of my fellow vassals. I think I am a big fan of this. He doesn't have any other alliances, and he doesn't appear to have any other alliances either. Hmm, very, very interesting indeed. Alright, so this alliance is already a good step. How do we feel about our wife? We have a very positive opinion. In my humble opinion, also comes from the mostly mechanical mod, so that is quite nice. But yeah, anyway, what I just wanted to say here as we kick it off is basically, I hope that 2022 can be a year for modding where we finally get a proper playset, a fully well-rounded, well-conceived playset for immersive mods just in vanilla, basically just vanilla plus, you know, much like CK2+, plus, like HIP, that sort of stuff. Because, man, that would be exciting. I would be uh, doing so many roleplay playthroughs. Now, this is also a mod that I really like. Enables me to choose... I would like to learn about wars of pinned characters. Absolutely. Um, family wars. Yes, thank you very much. Extended family wars. Sure. House wars. Yep, absolutely. These are all very important to me. Um, neighbor realm wars. Yep. And that's it, basically. All right, let's turn this off again. Very nice. And then we're going to move on and go on a pilgrimage. You know what? Let's just start out with that. We are not incredibly religious, but hey, this is just what tradition demands. Go on Trobrej pilgrimage. I shall go on the Trobrej pilgrimage and visit towns associated with the seven founding saints of Britain, uh, Brittany. Let's learn some history here. You will travel to seven towns in Brittany, each dedicated to a local Breton saint. Historical context. Although local pilgrimages have been a major part of Breton culture for centuries, like in many other parts of the Christian world, Trobrej is a modern term and concept used here as a convenience to represent historical pilgrimages in the region. I believe this is from the Rice mod made by Cybrexcan. I love these events. I love these local sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, historical tidbits. Really a big fan. They say that any Breton who doesn't finish the Trobrage pilgrimage will suffer in the afterlife, having to complete it then. It is about time I did this pilgrimage. While it is not as prestigious nor rigorous as traveling to Jerusalem, for instance, it is an important part of our heritage. I gather my belongings, making preparations. Alright, so we are starting in Caniff. This is actually good. We just married, you know, we can visit our new brother-in-law. Oh, and look at that, we actually have it. Yo, that's actually so cool. We have a symbol right here. My pilgrimage to seven cities in Brittany. I like that. Wedding celebration. Um, I do feel like I would like the money, right? Uh, what would my wife say? We do like her. 
She is generous. You know what? I'll let my subjects enjoy the festivities without worry or care. I'm doing that just to basically win the favor of Adelindis. That is something that maybe we want to do to, you know, make sure that she doesn't betray me in the name of her old house. Um, maybe we even want to romance her here. <laughs> oh, she does not like that. She dislikes Ambitious and she dislikes Callus. Uh, what about Seduce? Yeah, that doesn't... You know what? I'll, I'll just try to sway her. Let's just try to gain her opinion before we do anything else. The Trobrage begins. The day has come. It is time to begin the Trobrage pilgrimage. I will thus travel to the seven towns of the founding saints. First is Quimper, St. Quarantine's town. Let's do it. The rustic town of Quimper isn't as elegant nor extravagant as I would have wished, but it certainly has a certain charm. The conservative folk here are very spiritual and the religious atmosphere is a good start to my pilgrimage. Can I see? Oh yeah, this is Kemper. So this is the actual city, this barony right here. I make way to the church of St. Quarantine to pray and reflect. He was the first bishop of this town, and it is said that he had a miraculous fish whose parts would regrow, thus allowing him to sustain himself for as long as he needed. After I pray, but before I leave Quimper, I'll make sure to enjoy the local cuisine. Tomorrow I head, I head for St. Paul de Leon. Uh, is that mine? That could be my city, but honestly, I, I wouldn't actually know. St. Paul de Leon is, uh, is a lovely seaside town blessed with picturesque beaches and the refreshing ocean air. There are an unusual amount of vegetables and fruits growing here, which is unsurprising given the story surrounding St. Paul Aurelian, uh, Aurelian, the great saint of this town. It is here where St. Paul Aurelian established an important monastery. He had an interesting habit of refusing to eat meat and is said to have lived to almost a century and a half. Jesus. Well, yeah, that must be very helpful then. Perhaps I should honor his temperance somehow before I leave Portreguier. Um, I'll refuse to consume any kind of meat while at Saint Paul de Leon. You know what? Sure. Let, let's just commit to it. I, he's not particularly religious, but I don't think, you know, since he's not cynical, I don't think he would feel uh, be against this. So let's just do it. Let's try this. Maybe it'll help us uh, discover a new lifestyle. All right, we are in Tregier now. Tregier is a seaside town like Saint Paul de Leon, but it is much busier. An important local port, it is often busy with commerce and trade. Perhaps this place is not always the best fit for a more contemplative religious experience, but that is not necessarily a bad thing. Tregier is the town of St. Tut et Tadwell, a renowned hermit and monastic who was later made bishop of this town. I must practic practice his patience as I wade through the throngs of pilgrims. After this, we go to Saint Brieuc. Brieuc? Mm. Observe the traders and see how business is doing while I'm here. Ooh. That's interesting. It's a nice little bonus. Converse with the cosmopolitan pilgrims and hear their stories. I mean, this sort of would fit us, right? We would basically try to get a, a whiff of the greater town, right? We're currently just sitting in Briest and we would like to get, you know, what it maybe would feel like to live in Guinea, so in the capital of Brittany, or in Nantes, maybe. You know, this is, of course, at a very important river here uh, at the Loire, and with the Loire, that is a lot of trade. That is a true city of the world, so... Maybe we want to learn what it is like to live over there. Focus on spiritual matters instead. No, you know what? I will try to converse with the cosmopolitan pilgrims right here. It did not work out. Saint-Brioc. Now I am at Saint-Brioc, yet another harbor town. I am a bit tired of the busy towns I've recently come, and thankfully Saint-Brioc offers refuge in its natural bay, a large reserve of green scenery against the blue waters below. As the locals told me, I can even see and hear hundreds and thousands of birds here flourishing in this holy site. Here is the town of the... Uh, Great Saint-Brioc, who founded the monastery that this town revolves around. I'm lucky to be in the oratory he established, where I can lend myself to quiet prayer. A holy place indeed. My next destination after this is Saint-Malo or Saint-Malo. I was a bit apprehensive about going to Saint-Malo at first. It is known as a rough neighborhood where dwell pirates, rowdy seamen and fearsome adventurers. Damn, but I realize this is only one part of the town. There are also normal people who live here with good virtue despite or maybe because of their surroundings. Saint-Malo's patron, Saint-Malo, perhaps fits this town to some extent. A disciple of St. Brendan, so I'm told, he was said to have traveled and adventured the high seas with his master, reaching a mysterious land called the Blessed Isles. I wonder what heathens he converted on those isles. Damn, I am actually gonna Google that. I wanna know what those Blessed Isles are. Once I'm done here, I will travel next to Dole. Mingle with and understand the near do wells, or are they not God's children too? Stay on the quiet side of town. I prefer the company of pious, virtuous people. No, I don't. I mean, we're not very pious. I'm gonna maybe find somebody that can help me scheme, right? We're gonna try to uh, make some contacts here. 
Oh, and I just googled it, and that is quite interesting. So this legend about the Island of the Blessed, you know, appears to be related to Irish mythology, or at least related to Celtic mythology, when it comes to the other world, right? So this is supposedly related to this, and they try to convert it. This is this huge integration that, of course, happened in particular in this area here, when it comes to integrating their myths, making it so that it is acceptable and sort of fuses together, rather than outright rejecting it and making it so that people would be alienated. Very interesting. Now, Dol is a place filled with a place filled with history. I heard it was here, for instance, that Saint Taylor was assigned by King Budric to slay a fearsome dragon that had terrorized the locals. Oh, I wish I were there to see that battle. It must have been quite a spectacle. Holy Saint against evil dragon. It was also here that Saint Taylor and Saint Dol planted the fruit groves that remain to this day. As I stroll under these trees, I cannot help but, I but feel at ease in the midst of nature, God's creation. Not to mention the fruit they bear is delicious. After this, our journey is almost over. There's one last stop in Van. Um, I'm pretty sure that is a, an actual city here. Although I'm not certain where that actually would be. I'm not gonna lie to you. I should buy some of these tasty fruits while I'm here. Ooh, I would like that, yeah. No need to buy the fruit. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll buy it. Sure. Give me give me the reduced stress gain. I always like that. Van. I'm almost finished with the Drobrej, for I know uh, for I now arrive in Van, the seventh and last stop in this pilgrimage. It is, despite being a very ancient settlement, dating to before the Roman emperors, learned men tell me, a very joyous and exciting place as well. I found, for example, much amusement in the comically puffy, ugly granite statues the locals dubbed Van and his wife. Some of the locals also explained the lore of the ancient large stones that dot the area. But this is a time for religion, not mirth. I reflect on the Saint of Van, Saint Patin. They say the saint was a contemporary of the mighty King Arthur, the Great Britain hero. He tamed the king's avarice and humbled the monarch according to the legends. At any rate, I too must practice the virtues. This is where I went on the pilgrimage after all. My journey is almost over. Drobrej ends. My old residence looms on the horizon. I am home, having finished the traveling to the seven holy sites across Brittany. A duty all good Christians in Brittany must follow undoubtedly. I have reflected on much through this pilgrimage and seen the spiritual wonders of our land and our religious heritage. Yeah, look at that. We are now a pilgrim. That is pretty neat. We gained determined pilgrim. Oh, wow. That is from the tenet, of course. And then this, in particular, he gives us a 0.6 per month piety. That is quite respectable. We were negative until now because we are a sinner by being vengeful. But now we are, you know, a pilgrim and that is quite nice. It reflects nicely on us and... I mean, I would say it would reflect even more nicely on us if we could do something about him. You know what I will do? I will actually try to get a good relationship with our fellow vassal. We have Eduard here, Eduard, and he is apparently being educated in diplomacy. We could educate him in intrigue, but you know what? He is a diplomat, and well, Map Allen, I would like you to be the ward, you know, to be the person that takes care um, of our son. Uh, this was my son. There he is. Yeah, please educate this fella. Teach him to be a good diplomat. You know, that is something that I would like to see. Please don't make him a coward, though. I would not enjoy that. But you need friendship. You need a good relationship within your realm if you want to succeed in medieval Europe. That's just the way it is. Now, most of my negative feelings are, of course, oriented towards our leash, Conan here. And he has pretty high authority. Look at that. He's at rank four. So, yeah, the absolute authority is very, very strong. Of course, you know, gives him a lot of rights against us. He can revoke titles. He can retract vassals to actually get rid of this. We certainly want to change our contract as soon as I can. I will be picking up Truth as relatives so that I can get a hook on him and then change my contract. We, we definitely need to, like, uh, lower this. I mean, no doubt about it. Even now, honestly, why don't we just do a Liberty Faction? Yeah, I, I want this to be weakened. And I think this is the best way that we can do this. None here would join me. Um, I wonder why. They, they certainly... Oh, he is terrified of our liege. Damn, very interesting. And I am known as the Wanderer. What a cool little nickname. I like the, the epithet mod that adds so much character that we actually just got this. I mean, we are somebody that, you know, did was on a pilgrimage. And my god, our stats are actually <laughs> insane. So that is definitely a name that I enjoy. Uh, do we see any other names? Uh, he's the Stout. Okay, yeah, fair enough. He's the bastard. I mean, you know who he is. Good old Willy. Hmm. How, are, how is our population doing, by the way? A new claimant? Oh, Hoel, come on. He got an unpressed claim on my title. You wouldn't dare. Oh, I think he's actually terrified of me. I don't think he was terrified of our liege. I think he's terrified of me. Oh, yeah, I, I did not realize this. I, I thought it was of our liege, but no, very much not so. Um, yeah, we definitely want to get some strong hooks as well so that we can get people into this faction. Listen, I'm just doing what is good for the realm. Lost by the ruins. Hermael, I believe this is our bishop. Indeed, it is. And man, he's a terrible, terrible bishop. 
and I was separated from my entourage and guards while we were traveling to the next town. We found an abandoned ruin of an old building where we took shelter. We decided to stay here for the night. After we got the fire started and sat around it, things were a little awkward at first given the unusual circumstances, but we managed to start a rather pleasant conversation about various topics. The next morning, my guards thankfully found us and no one was hurt. Thanks to my shared experiences with Hamel, we certainly think of each other more highly. Oh, that is actually very significant. Uh, he starts endorsing me, and we might form a friendship here. I make a bit more money now, thanks to him endorsing us. Uh, I guess I should appreciate that. Now, does that mean that I might want to justify a claim? I don't trust this guy was justifying a claim. Like, as a person, I'm pretty sure. I, I don't think that is a good endeavor. Um, I do think I would like to support schemes very, very soon. Right now, let's just develop our domain. You know what? I want Leon, if I can't live down here in the cities of the world, right, I would like Leon to become a city of the world. We need to uh, make the best out of what we have, I guess. I'm also interested in, as we go with this playthrough, I would be interested in actually sort of maybe expanding here and taking Cornwall. Oh, and our wife is pregnant. Adelindis. Let's see whether we have a son or daughter. I am playing with Inherit Chance. When we die... If we have multiple heirs that get land, I can be any of them. So I won't mistreat my children unless it's in character. I, I will tell you that right now. Ah, look at that. Our courtier, actually one of our knights here, is uh, a bit down, a bit depressed. Perhaps he's in a bad mood. Say some comforting words to him. We don't really like him. Truly mock and laugh at him. We are callous. We are not a good guy. I will definitely laugh at you. Fool. Don't be depressed. It's, it's just that simple, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I can marry off my marshal. He is 58. I don't know whether that is a worthwhile marriage, but then again, would he be interested in marrying? Oh, he is chaste. I'm not marrying you off. My cousin, on the other hand, he is impatient. He is gout-ridden. I don't think you're gonna get married. I'm sorry to tell you this, but I, <laughs> I don't think I will hoist you on any woman out there. My daughter has been born... Anna Huel, if that is your name, probably not how you pronounce it, but look at that. A little perfect, blissful girl. Very nice. And thank you, my wife, for gifting me another child. Now, let's pick up the truth as relative. Perk right here and try to weaken the relationship, the grasp that he has on his realm here of our liege. Oh, yeah, I will also immediately actually uh, change you to support schemes. I mean, why not? A dark knight can truly make the shadows in my castles always come alive. The perceived risk for unsanctioned visitors rise ever higher for every unguarded corner spotted. If I alone can see this many faults, imagine what more people with a similar perspective could do. Damn. He doesn't seem paranoid, but maybe he's slowly but surely getting there. <sighs> my perspective alone is enough. You know what? I'm, I'm just gonna go with my perspective alone is enough. I don't think we are necessarily paranoid, so I don't think we need to uh, focus on home defense, but... I do think we need to focus on aggressive defense. In 10 months, we should have, you know, a hook on our dear liege. At least I hope so. And my wife, would you be interested in maybe actually starting to have a romance? Um, you know what, quite frankly, I'm going to do this already. I'm going to give her... Who are you, by the way? Oh, you are my grand... My, my cousin twice removed or something? Are you my, my grand nephew? I don't know what the actual term there is. You should marry. It, it is true, you should marry. This would be a very far away marriage. I mean, we can't really marry him to anybody that is important. I don't think that is viable. Nobody's interested in him. So I think a local marriage may be best. Although the Galicians aren't necessarily a bad marriage uh, pair right there either. She is somewhat... She's not actually related to anybody, I don't think. <laughs> there seems to be no importance to this family and yet you exist. Who are you? You know what? I don't know. Um, if I find somebody that is uh, Breton, then I'm going to marry my cousin or my grandcousin off to that as well. But I will let my wife educate this courtier for the moment. And I will let my wife educate my daughter already because, hey, it's her child. I, I think she should have a right to, you know, basically determine how she comes up. Alright, so here we go. Fabricate a hook and incriminating missive. By holding a messenger from the court of Conan, an opportunity has presented itself. By copying the Togasochs, I believe it means prince in uh, Breton seal, I can fabricate a letter threatening increased taxes and circulate it among his vassals. Or at least threaten to. That is your signature, is it not? Interfering with servants. Okay, so I get a negative opinion from my courtiers and guests because I'm basically meddling with the work of the people at my court and at his court and I get a weak hook on him. Ends my scheme to fabricate a hook. You know what? Yeah, absolutely. I, I will do this. Um, I could also just build influence here, but nah, don't worry about that. We are successful. I have a hook, meaning that I can go and you not know, just lower uh, law my feudal taxes, I think, is basically what I want to do here. 
It's a mission impact minus five from zero. Yep, that is exactly what I want. And then I can pass this. Obviously, I wish I could do more, but you can't do too much. This is a, a slow build up here, you know, per generation. You can only change it once. And this makes it so that all of a sudden his submission should go low. My submission just went up. Oh, I believe it was just higher, I guess. Under the sun. I'm traveling and the sun is beating down on us heavily. However, it is too late to turn back home. I am getting closer to my destination, the mansion of a local noble I have to meet. Yet, uh, I and the rest of my entourage are clearly getting more and more tired as the sun rises ever higher in the sky. We should rest for a bit. Continue on. Time is of the essence. Yeah, no, I'm ambitious. I will definitely take the tiring travel. It's a minor health penalty. That is fine. Um, it is actually interesting, you know, the distance of a realm and the obligation of a lord visiting their realm is really not ever reflected in Crusader Kings 3. In particular, this is the most obvious case, I think, in the Holy Roman Empire, because if you look at this, and let me just get the, the vessel map here. If you look at this, sure, this is the domain. This is where Kaiser Heinrich IV is currently sitting, but historically speaking, and this had absolute necessity. You know, we never think about this. Why did they even do this? But historically speaking, what isn't reflected at all, that the emperor wouldn't be in his domain all the time. Quite the opposite. He would travel around, in particular when he was planning a campaign, he would travel around to vassals, would be interested in conversing with them to gain their, you know, support, be it for elections after his death, be it for situations of warfare, be it to basically get rid of a fight between some of their vassals, that sort of stuff. And I wish this was reflected. As it stands right now, we always assume Kaiser Heinrich is at home, at his court, and etc, etc, but the entire traveling court thing is something that also really just isn't represented in uh, the royal court, for example, which is something that makes me sad, quite frankly. It is a very important aspect, gaining the support of local vassals. This is the big topic. This is why the vassals down here in Italy, for example, were so hostile, were so agitated over the idea of being ruled from north of the Alps, because it really felt far away. The emperor visiting was not very common, and when the emperor was down there, then in the north they would feel as though the emperor should have no authority. I really wish this sort of thing, you know, much like this event just came in there, was more represented, because it's pretty cool. It's such a big part. Ruling over a large realms, a realm means that you need to be in control of your vessels, and you can't be in control of your vessels unless you visit them. Um, this is something that I would also see, uh, would like to see much more integrated in military campaigns, you know, but hey, that's something far removed. I, my military thoughts in CK3 go much, much further than what the system currently could do. We have some guests from afar coming tonight, and I wish to serve them some of the finest Breton crepe. Should we serve them sweet or savory? Um, I personally, honestly, I like them sweet and savory. Like, not at the same time, but I like both of these. Um, I'm gonna say savory here for the moment. It, it needs to be a good meal. I, I like this snack, you know, it's more of a snack when it's sweet, but then when it's savory, that is just good food. How's the war for England going? Let's take a look at this. Harold II, the stout, is losing both of these, but it doesn't necessarily need to mean much. Um, I think Harold Hadrade here is in a bad... Yeah, he's in a bad spot, isn't he? Hmm, even these aides, yeah, I mean the, the Swedish king coming in, damn, that can actually... This is a this is a massive input here from Eric II. Oakenshield, that is such a cool nickname. How are you doing, my friend, by the way? I like him a lot. He does not really like me. Um, I'm going to stop swaying our wife. I think we have a good relationship. After this one is over, I'm going to stop swaying her. Then we're going to try to sway Hoel right here. Oh, look at that. She is not swayed by me, and I will, I will make another attempt, but I don't think I will. We have a good relationship with our wife. That is all I can ask for. Now let's make a good relationship with our, uh, with our dear brother-in-law. I... You know, actually, what I will do is... Gulatik Eduard the Patriarch right here. He's, he's already 71. But I would like to fabricate a, uh, a... Not a claim, a hook on him. Definitely would like to fabricate a hook. That sounds nice. Uh, if we could get him to join our faction. You need to get lucky. You need a, a strong hook. Currently, that seems rather unlikely. But if we could add him to our faction, I think that would be very positive. Ooh, he actually already is in the faction. In that case, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop that. Let's take a look at the Council of our Liege. Uh, we, we have everything in place. Oh, my spy master does not like me. Gwena, why are you so hostile towards me? But I'm gonna... Listen, I don't distrust you just yet. I am the spy master for our Liege, of course. I would like to get a hook maybe on your wife, quite frankly. Yeah, sure. You know what? Why not? Having somebody so close to our Liege sounds like a good plan to me. And wow, she is the granddaughter of the King of England and of the King of the Kievan Rus. <laughs> Just imagine if they fuse that. That is a commonwealth right there. The commonwealth of England and the Kievan Rus. Uh, we have another another skill here. 
I think I would like to find some secrets, and then I'm actually gonna immediately send out her, Gwenna, you should go and find some secrets about my dear liege. Yeah, we're gonna try to focus everything on a liege. Sleep terrors. Locals from Leon have reported most unusual and concerning incidents. Several sources have claimed that they have seen otherworldly shadows, vaguely in the shape of people, going around attempting to kill unsuspecting innocents. The common thread here is that the shadows tend to appear at night as people are falling asleep or waking up. Reputable scholars and priests believe this is nothing but hysteria. Troubling times we live in. Are we, in particular, do, do we believe in this sort of thing? Reports of shadow people? Send in priests to pray, God preserve us. All the scholars are right, it's just hysteria. This option decreases how long the county modifier in question will last compared for the default option. Ah, so this would be for seven years. You know what? No, the, the scholars are right. I, I will eat that prestige, certainly. I, I don't really see an issue with that. Um, and can I dismiss this? Yeah, 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 look at that. We have no current situation. There's nothing we can do in particular. And that is perfectly fine. Oh my god, what happened to my son? My son is wounded. Wait a minute. He, he does have a friend. That is, oh, that is very nice. That is, uh, is that a son of his? Wait a minute, let me, let me check this. This fella here is the son of just some, not at all a random guy. This is a part of the, the Breish family, basically. Wait a minute, then who is it actually? Alright, you made a friend, and he doesn't have any claims, he has nothing, he just is a long-standing family member, I guess. I mean, that's good enough. Uh, we could potentially marry him, actually, to our daughter, matrilineally, ideally, which would further, you know, sort of enshrine this, uh... Yeah, okay, you know what, let's do this. This is not a very prestigious marriage, but he is a part of the old family, and, hey, old blood likes to marry old blood. That's just the way it is. It has come to my attention that some local commoners are moving to compare the capital of my brother-in-law, Guletic Hoel. Uh, locals, newly settled or not, praising me can surely do no harm to this perception of me. Take this gold and make sure you are heard. Yeah, you know what? Sure. I, I would like him to like me. Again, we are scheming against him as well. Or we would like to anyway, but we'll do that eventually, right? <laughs> Alright. In my work at the court of Twagasik uh, Conan, I have failed to find any secrets that his bishop Helguthan might possess. However, the truth does not have to stop us. It would be simple to make sure that Helguthan suddenly did have secrets he would not want to get out. So this is his bishop. I like it. How much money is this? 50 and it is a strong hook. We could certainly murder our leash with that. I can... Uh, <laughs> with that strong hook, we can do a lot. We could do a lot uh, in terms of him joining us. But right now, he's not in particular very useful. I wonder why he isn't joining us. Hmm. I need that strong hook. I really do. And we could lower our obligations. But you know what? I think I'm going to call it here for the first episode. Uh... As I said, this is a very relaxed playthrough. I want to roleplay as much as I can, which is why I'm not min-maxing. I'm not trying to push it any further. Usually, we could already be the Duke of Brittany. But I'll be honest with you, isn't it just nice towards the end of the year to sit down and just have some fun? I hope that you're having a good time as we again walk towards 2022. I'll see you tomorrow in the next episode of this series here as we play in Brittany. See you later, alligator.